Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our August 30th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading out of the original edition, Lesson 242. This day is God's. It is my gift to Him. This day is God's. It is my gift to Him. Before we read that, let me just talk just a moment about yesterday's lesson. You know, he started off by saying, what joy there is today. It is a time of special celebration. Did you, did, you get, did you get a sense of that special celebration yesterday? What was it so special about yesterday? Well, they will be united now as you forgive them all, for I will be forgiven by you today. We're going to talk a little bit more of that in our text reading today, but this idea that when we forgive everyone, we're forgiven Jesus, we're for, and if that you know it's like we are the ones that do the forgiving you know we used to have this idea that somehow god did the forgiving and you know in some sense you could say that because god doesn't hold any judgments against you and when you finally realize that it's like god forgave you <laughs> but really it was just you realizing that you're never been you've never been condemned but i wanted to, that last sentence in our prayer yesterday said how glad are we to have our sanity restored to us and to remember that we all are one? Okay, so this unity that we're trying to reach for, this realization that we're all united, this is, this is like so powerful because we're united in God and we unite with each other through our brothers. We'll be reading about this in our text. I don't know if we'll get it all read today, but we'll get, we'll, we're going to read the rest of the constant state or a good part of it. And it talks a lot about that, the importance of giving our gratitude to each other because that's how we give our gratitude to God and that's how we, that's how we approach God. All right, so our lesson for today. This day is God's. It is my gift to him. I will not lead my life alone today. I do not understand the world. And so to try to lead my life alone must be but foolishness. But there is one who knows all that is best for me, and he is glad to make no choice for me but the ones that lead to God. This day I give to him, for I would not, not delay my coming home. I would not delay my homecoming. <laughs> and it is he who knows the way to him. It is the Holy Spirit that knows the way to God. So we want God, we want him to lead us. He says here, I try to lead my life alone must be but foolishness because I don't understand the world. There is one who knows all that is best for me. So just turn your life over to God and ask him to help lead you. That's why we want to be really good at asking for help when our mood tells us that we need it. <laughs> and the prayer, and so we give today to you. We come with wholly open minds. We do not ask for anything that we may think we want. We do not ask for anything we may think we want. Give us what you would have received by us. You know all our desires and our needs, and you will give us everything we want that will help us find the way to you. And remember, that's the only thing that is lacking in this world, is to find our way to God, which we know is the atonement which is that interlocking chain of forgiveness, which when welded complete is the atonement. All right, this day is God's. It is my gift to him. So let's be quick and let's be thoughtful all day today of giving our lives, our day to God. Okay, we'll read what is the world in just a moment. Let's go back and look at our text reading. And as you're uh, turning there, let me just tell you a little bit about where I'm sitting. I'm sitting here in a little bit of corn that I've got growing. Uh, and uh, corn is Z maize. I've, I planted it here. I told you about planting it just here a couple weeks ago, and it's already up good. Beans didn't come up as well as I thought they should have, and not much of the of the uh, squash and a little bit right there that came up, but I may have to plant some more of that in here. It's getting a little late, so may 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 not be able to get anything but just the corn here. Uh, some things that I found about corn, though, is that it's high in fiber. 
uh, high in B9, which is folate. It's got vitamin C, magnesium, and potassium. And something I found on RX list said that uh, corn silk has been used for bladder infections, inflamed urinary systems, enlarged prostates, kidney stones, bedwetting. Uh, it's also been, so a lot of uh, urinary tract uh, things may be able to be assisted by uh, corn silk. A lot of people have used it in the past for that. There's not a lot of scientific data on this stuff, but you know, it, we're all trying to learn and I'm just trying to point out what it's been used for so that we can do our own investigating. Ask your, um, you know, ask your, uh, ask God to lead you. Um, ask your doctors for help. You know, that's that's what they're for. Ask them how. Tell them you want to you want to live in harmony with nature best you can, and just want to know if some of this stuff could be helpful for you. Uh, it has been used for kidney stones, for uh, bed. Uh, I just said that. Oh, it's good for heart disease and diabetes. It's been used for high blood pressure, fatigue, and high cholesterol le levels. So a lot of people have thought it's been good for those uses. Uh, so, anyway, do your studies. All right. In, we are ready for, in uh, chapter 4 of the text, Let's we're going to back up and start in the middle of paragraph 85. And it says, In learning to escape from the illusions you have made, your great debt to each other is something you must never forget. All right? You must never forget in learning to escape from the illusions you have made. Your great debt to each other is something you must never forget. Uh, that particular uh, phrase, I, well, I'm going to read a little bit more, then I want to read something out of the Bible. It was what I quoted to the other day, and I didn't get it exactly right, and I wanted to bring your attention to where I found it at. It is exactly the same debt you owe to me. Whenever you react egotistically towards each other, you're throwing away the graciousness of your indebtedness and the holy perception it would produce. The term holy can be used here because as you learn how much you are indebted to the whole sonship, which includes me, you come as close to knowledge as perception can. The gap is then so small that knowledge can easily flow across it and obliterate it forever. You have very little trust in me as yet, but it will increase as you turn more and more often to me instead of your egos for guidance. The results will convince you increasingly that your choice in turning to me is the only sane one you can make. No one who, learned, no one who has learned from experience that one choice brings peace and joy and the other brings chaos and disaster needs much conditioning. <laughs> okay, well, so he's going to get on to explaining more about that, but I just want to take a pause here and look at Romans 13 and verse 8. What? Uh, and I probably should put my glasses on to read this small print out of this King James Version. And uh, let's see, it says here that Romans 13, 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. And thus, and he, ha, and he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt, and, and then he goes on. And that's really the main verse I wanted to read. But let me read just a little bit more to you. Because he, he kind of amplifies this quite a bit. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Lie. Thou shalt not covet. Um, envy somebody else's possessions and want them. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love your neighbor as thyself. In other words, you fulfill all those. If you are just loving your neighbor as yourself, you won't lie to them or cheat them or take from them. Okay? Um, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. 
that was the, those three verses. It looks like the sun's come out nice and bright now. I hope you can still see just fine. It gets a little bright that we've had a lot of cloud this morning. Okay, we're ready to, to continue reading on paragraph 87. The ego cannot withstand the conditioning process because the process itself demonstrates that there is another way. Conditioning by rewards has always been more effective than conditioning by pain because pain is an ego illusion and can never induce more than a temporary effect. The rewards of God, however, are immediately recognized as eternal. Since this recognition is made by you and not the ego, the recognition itself establishes that you and your ego cannot be identical. You may believe that you have already accepted the difference, but you and and by no means oh excuse me, you may believe that you have already accepted the difference, but you are by no means convinced as yet. The very fact that you are preoccupied with the idea of escaping from the ego shows this. <laughs> okay. We want, to, we want to side with truth or with the soul, with honesty, with love, with peace, with joy, and escape the, the offerings of the ego that's, you know, that seemed, uh, it just doesn't connect everything as one. You cannot escape from the ego by humbling it and controlling it or punishing it. Remember that the ego and the soul do not know each other. The separated mind cannot man maintain the separation except by dissociating. Having done this, it utilizes repression against all truly natural impulses. Not because the ego is a separate thing, but because you want to believe that you are. The ego is a device for maintaining this belief, but it is still only your willingness to use the device that enables it that enables it to endure. 89. My trust in you is greater than yours is excuse me, my trust in you is greater than yours in me at the moment. But it will not always be that way. Your mission is very simple. You've been chosen to live so as to demonstrate that you are not an ego. <laughs> I repeat that I do not choose God's channels wrongly. The Holy One shares my trust and always approves my atonement decisions because my will is never out of accord with His. I have told you before that I am in charge of the whole atonement. This is only because I completed my part in it as a man and can now complete it through other men. Remember, this is Jesus talking. My chosen receiving and sending channels cannot fail because I will lend them my strength as long as theirs is wanting. I will go with you to the Holy One and through my perception, he can bridge the little gap. Your gratitude to each other is the only gift I want. All right, there we're going to fulfill the fulfill the law by offering gratitude. You know, to owe no man anything but to love one another. Well, he's saying, it's really simple. Just just have gratitude. So be, be aware. Watch yourself for that. Don't just say, I'm going to tolerate him and think you've done your part. You want to have gratitude. Really feel, find reasons to lavish thanks. Thanks. Remember we learned that? Your gratitude to each other is the only gift I want, says Jesus. I will bring it to God for you, knowing that to know your brother is to know God. So this gratitude, that's how we're going to come to know God, because we, that's going to let us know our brother. The way you know your brother is the way you know God. A, I will bring it to God for you, knowing that to know your brother is to know God. What, what's he going to bring to God for you? Your gratitude. A little knowledge is an all-encompassing thing. If you are grateful to each other, you are grateful to God for what he created. Through your gratitude, you can come to know each other. And one moment of real recognition makes all men your brothers, because they are all of your Father, 
Love does not conquer all things, but it does set all things straight or set all things right. Because you are all the kingdom of God, I can lead you back to your own creations which you do not yet know. What has been dissociated is still there. That's the constant state. Even though we've dissociated it in our mind and our belief we're not in heaven, but it can be it can be corrected because it's really a constant state. And we're really in heaven now. As you come closer to your brother, you do approach me, and as you withdraw from him, I become distant to you. You want to come into the kingdom of heaven? Well, then see your brothers with gratitude. Your giant step toward, excuse me, your giant step forward was to insist on a collaborative venture, seeing us all as one. That was what we learned in our lesson yesterday. That was why I wanted to point it out to you, actually. Our lesson yesterday ended by how glad are we to have our sanity restored to us and to remember that we all are one. Well, what he's saying here, your giant step forward forward was to insist on a collaborative venture. We're all in this together. We're adventuring together. Let's see ourselves as such, as one with God, as, as God in flesh, and love each other that way. This does not go against the true spirit of meditation. It is inerrant in it. Meditation is a collaborative venture with God. It cannot be undertaken successfully by those who disengage themselves from the sonship because they are disengaging themselves from me. God will come to you only as you will give him to your brothers. Learn first of them and you will be ready to hear God as you hear them. That is because the function of love is one. There's so much there we could talk about, but just read it. Make sure you got it. But it basically is saying that as you go inside in your meditations, you, you can't even do even that complete unless you bring with you the oneness and the appreciation you have with your brothers. How can you teach someone the value of something he has deliberately thrown away? He must have thrown it away because he did not value it. You can only show him how miserable he is without and bring it near very slowly so he can learn how his misery lessens as he approaches it. This is how we want to start teaching. This conditions him to associate his misery with its absence and to associate the opposite of misery with its presence. It gradually becomes desirable as he changes his mind about its worth. All right, this is what Jesus has been doing for us. I am conditioning you to associate misery with the ego and joy with the soul. You have conditioned yourself the other way around. A far greater reward, however, will break through any conditioning if it is repeatedly offered whenever the old habit pattern is broken. You are still free to choose, but can you really want the rewards of the ego in the presence of the rewards of God? <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> That's an obvious Anne's question, isn't it? Okay, let's go take a look at what is the world. The world is false perception. It is born of error and has not left its source. It will remain no longer than the thought which gave it birth is cherished. When the thought of separation has been changed to one of true forgiveness, will the world be seen in quite another light? and one which leads to truth, where all the world must disappear and all its errors vanish. Now its source has gone, and its effects are gone as well. A little, little flutter by coming by here. Look at that. <laughs> see if we can get him to come up on to where you guys can see him. He's pretty, pretty landing right here next to me. I guess he's not going to come over. I can show you a little blue one. The world was made as an attack on God. It symbolizes fear. And what is fear except love's absence? Thus the world was meant to be a place where God could enter not and where his son could be apart from him. Here was perception born, for knowledge could not cause such insane thoughts, but eyes deceive and ears hear falsely. Now mistakes become quite possible. For certainty has gone. 
the mechanisms of illusion have been born instead. And now they go to find what has been given them to seek. Their aim is to fulfill the purpose which the world was made to witness and make real. They see in its illusions but a solid base where truth exists upheld apart from lies. Yet everything that they report is but illusion, which is kept apart from truth. As sight was made to lead away from truth, it can be redirected. Sounds become the call of God. Okay, catch that. As sight was made to lead away from truth, it can be redirected. So you can redirect what was made to go away from God can now be used to go to God. Sound becomes the call of God. Sounds become the call of God. Just be listening for them. And all perception can be given a new purpose by the one whom God appointed Savior to the world. Follow his light and see the world as he beholds it. Hear his voice alone in all that speaks to you. And let him give you peace and certainty, which you have thrown away. But heaven has preserved for you and him. There's another reference to the constant state. And the last paragraph, five in our reading, what is the world? Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world, for we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ, that what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So what was made to die, we can now see it through the eyes of Christ and it's made forever and it's now uh, restored to everlasting life. Okay, let's see. This day is God's. It is my gift to him. I will not lead my life alone today. I do not understand the world. And so to try to lead my life alone must be foolishness. For there is one who knows all that is best for me. And he is glad to make no choices for me but the ones that lead to God. This day I give to him, for I would not delay my coming home. And it is he who knows the way to him. Or if it helps you, and I'm going to switch those words around. This day I give to the Holy Spirit, for I would not delay my homecoming. And it is he who knows the way to him. And the prayer for this day is God's. It is my gift to him. And so we give today to you. We come with wholly open minds. We do not ask for anything that we may think we want. Give us what you would have received by us. You know all our desires and our needs. And you will give us everything we want and that will help us find the way to you. This day is God's. It is my gift to him. Hey, and thank you all so much for following along. I was telling somebody the other day that I get more out of these lessons than any of my students, I expect. Uh, but I hope that you get as much as I get. I mean, you know, we're all in this together. But I'm just was trying to point out to my friend that, but, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not how much they get. It inspires me to share these these truths you know we're, as we're teaching we're learning and i'm trying to learn this like you all are so thanks for joining me and you, it inspires me greatly to have you follow along all right thank you thank you thank you so until tomorrow this day is god's it is my gift to him <laughs>